is called today. And we bless this day that is called today. You have given it to us. And I pray that all in this auditorium and other auditoriums, the houses of God, would not allow the atmosphere to feel restricted. Because free men and women in God cannot be restricted. When your freedom is not the working of your own hands and the ingenuity of the brilliance of your mind, but it's by the power of God that steps into the confines of time and is able to magnify and alter molecules and atoms and shift things and make it brighter, bigger, shorter, deeper. I pray God that we would want a deep encounter with you in spite of what our eyes behold. And we rip from the scripture that when John was on the island of Patmos, a place of confinement, John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Do you know what it is to be in prison? Literally. But you're not in prison. And John was in the spirit of freedom with his God on the day of worship. It doesn't matter where they put you. Remember the Lord that have delivered you. And if you could just remember him and say, Lord, I come. And I come to worship you on the day you have prescribed for your worship from me. As a congregation, John knew the church all along was worshiping on that day. And even though he was confined, John said, I will not allow my atmosphere to confine God's praise. But he found himself in the spirit of God. And the revelation that we read and knowing of is because one man says, I refuse to be held captive by my surroundings. And God said, I'm looking for such worshipers in this season and in this time that will realize that whatever is around you does not have the power to restrict me from you. And I pray this would be an encouragement now to open you up to your God. That you would say, God, I'm opening up my gates. I want you to come on in, in this day that is called the Lord's Day. Somebody give him a praise right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Do this for us and may we receive the word of God. And may you right now slow time down that we would be able to receive in full the measure that you would have us receive even now. The doses that would be so concentrated that God time will seem it was longer than what has been permitted. And we thank you for stepping into our time. So I thank you for that which is and that which has already come. Now we shall partake of it and we shall now become of it. And we bless you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And everybody says, and everybody says, and everybody says, you may be seated, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord God. It's good seeing all of you in the house of the Lord. This morning, it has been about three months now. I have not seen your faces in the house, but I know you were watching mine while I was in your house. And it's still in finish yet because we still streaming live for those who will not be able to be here. But for those of you who are here, we thank God for you this morning. Remember, I've been prepping all of us and telling us, listen to me, when you come, when you come, remember, keep sharing this with you all because I don't want your spirit to be jolted. I don't want it to be removed because this is what it is. And what it is does not remove God from who he is and what he want to do. Are you with me? So when you come into the house, you say, God, I'm, I reach into your house. Like David asked, glad when they say, let's go into the house of the Lord. That's all I want you to hold. The very joy of coming into the house of God. Are you with me, y'all? And so I want you to hold this joy alive because that is going to be the strength that is going to cause you to absorb from God. 
But if you lose your joy, you will be in the spirit called discouragement. And discouragement hinders you from receiving anything. And even though it is being given to you, it cannot be digested by you because it will be hindered by the power of discouragement. Discouragement normally gives a ministry called, what good is this in a time like this? What benefit can I receive when this is the condition? This is what discouragement does. Are you with me? Have you ever been discouraged before? All of us, I believe. And once that spirit take hold of you to the fullness of, they could offer you a million dollars and at that time you would say that is meaningless to me. Because of the power and the counsel of this spirit called discouragement. I don't want you to be discouraged because the whole world will have to face what you are facing. This is not a Trinidad thing. This is not a Valley Kingdom ministry thing. This is a worldwide thing. And some worlds have it worse than us. So I want all our trainees in here to count your God blessings. Hey, y'all, y'all didn't hear what I just said. Count your God blessings. Because the number figure for here in this land, we got to say, God, I thank you and I praise you. Because when we hear the number figure in other man's land, you realize it could have been us. And if it were, then none of us exist. The civilization in Trinidad and Tobago would not exist if you pull the numbers you're hearing in this land here. Then we got to say, God, you have been merciful to us. And the church is supposed to say, God, thank you for showing us mercy. Thank you, God, for saving us from the dilemma that could have been worse than what is. Let not our hearts be so indifferent. Because we have to go through the measure of confinement. But God still has been merciful. So let us count our God-given blessings and say, God, I thank you. With a grateful heart, I lift my hands to you. With a grateful heart, I lift my voice to you. And God wants us to begin to understand this and express it, saints of God. Let it come from the house of God first that it could heal our nation. For those who are so depressed, who will carry the good news called the gospel of Jesus Christ? In a time like this, who will carry such good news when they would not want to receive that good news? But God administered another dimension to me when it comes to Isaac and the farming. Another farming that came into a generation line that hit the generation line before which was his father Abraham. And the word of the Lord came to Isaac and told Isaac, you remain, don't go down to Egypt. But you remain right here and right here where I'm telling you to remain, I'm going to give you instructions as you follow my first instruction. And Isaac obeyed God and he remained. And I know it was God that told Isaac, now you go on so. And this morning while I'm doing the studies again and looking over, he put that in my spirit and said, look at this again. Because whenever we look at this scripture, we see it in one dimension of the cut of the diamond of the scripture. But he showed me another cut. Because in a time like this right now, where the hearts and cries of humanity is according to their needs. But God said, it is a farming season. But would you sow my good seed? Come on, y'all. Or am I going to be ashamed of the gospel to share it? Because folks might refuse it. But God says, sow that seed now. And before the year end, you're going to have a house. Okay, you all now start to think it through. Your all time is limited, so I can't break down and explain. You got to let the Holy Ghost help you out up inside here because that's the that is what time is going to be it's going to force us to mature because apostle ain't breaking down for us to understand none no more the holy ghost have been given to do that exactly in your life so you hold that word and say god so you're trying to tell me in a time like this that is so tough i need to so and he's like yeah you will receive a hundredfold can i trust the integrity of god's word yes you can because it's already written about those who have done it then it is doable. Yeah. But do I have faith to do it? So for those of us who are online, 
Good morning to all of you. Sorry for being so rude, not addressing you who are online this morning because I have folks in front of me. So somehow, uh, somehow I, I, I'm addressing those who are in front, but you in front of me too. Please forgive me of this, but I welcome you this morning and may you be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as you receive the word of the Lord this morning. So we don't have much time. Because we're trying to keep everything and I hope we're going to enjoy what the Lord is doing because the Lord is doing a good work. God is always doing something new. Because there is a, a portion of God that says God is able to take whatever is and work it for his good and pleasure. And if God says he could do that, you see in all this here, you got to say God is going to use this too. But we have to be able to wait on God to see how God and what God is going to do. And some of us have already begun to track and trace God is about this. God is working through this to do this. Now you have to take this on a personal level. And then take it to the corporate level. Because every picture that we see that we love is made up of brush strokes. Brush strokes. And every stroke is different than the next stroke. But when the artist finished stroking the canvas with a multitude of colors according to what is being painted from within, then he sets it and he calls a display and he puts a distance between the painting and you. Because if you're too close, you will miss the whole beauty of the painting. So the, the, the artist knows the distance between the viewer and that which you're viewing. Because the artist knows exactly what he wants his viewers to receive from this painting. Yeah. So he knows the distance to put you. And right now we have to get accustomed to social distancing. Because we need to understand what is trying to be told to us. And we need to get accustomed to it. Are you with me? But the artist will have those that are serving with and their distance will not be as, as, as far off as the viewers. Are you with me? So then we have to know how to trust God in everything that is placed as a rule to regulate. Hello somebody. And so I want the church, the body of Jesus Christ, not to be those who are only complaining. But we should be complying to show the bigger picture. Come on somebody. To show the bigger picture. Because there's a bigger picture. And let's do it right. We are all part of the bigger picture. Every one of us a pixel. And if I should remain where God have put me there, then somebody gonna come touch me close enough. And the portrait of God's heart and his mind can now be displayed before a world that could say thank you for your obedience. Are you with me this morning? Turn in your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter four zero, please. Genesis chapter 40. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now I want you to know that because I'm the preacher, I don't need to wear a mask. And I'm far away from you. Because I don't want your brain to be distracted at this present time whereby how come apostle don't have on his mask? By law, and we are on camera. By law, those who are doing such because of the distances that have been set, we don't need to wear the mask. All right? So we can let that rest. Remember, in Valley Kingdom Ministry, we are putting up everything that our people will be edified with the information. So if you are misinformed, it's because you are not adhering to that which we have placed there, that you can do your pre-work. So when you come here, we don't have to do no set of explanation, ex ex explaining in that sense. Amen? So let's go to the book of Genesis chapter what I told us. Ah, you are with me. Because of time, I would not be able to give you mashed potatoes. I will boil the potato and give it to you. That you can dice and you can mash which, whichever way you want to eat it. Because we don't have time for such. We are still dealing with the faithful heart. And we are still dealing with the great power of integrity. It is a teaching that is not one to just hustle out from. Because the success of every human being on the face of this earth lies upon the grid of integrity. 
Your morals concerning life must rest upon the grid of integrity. If you don't have good morals, it's because the grid of integrity it has not been laid very well for you. And if it has been laid, your grid have corrosions. Corrosions to the grid of integrity comes about because we have made some mishaps in our lives and we never take ownership to reverse it, to renew it, to clean it out and say, I'm not going that way again. But if you have had mishaps in your life and you have taught, taken ownership to it and say, it was wrong what I did and I want to make this thing right, then what you are doing is renewing. The only way the scripture that is written that says a righteous man falls seven times but he gets back up. The only way the righteous man could get back up is if he takes time while he is down to consider what got him down. And because he remembers he's a righteous man, then he must make that which get him down right that he could get back up again. And he goes. That is called renewing the grid of integrity. You don't want to lose the power of this integrity. Now God has said this for us, for his children. Every single one of us. Because there's none of you inside of here that could tell me you have never slipped, slide, done something you should not have done. And God should overlook it without saying come to this place. That's why he says if any one of us should sin, he's, what did he say? Come. Come boldly. When you come, you will find your grace. You will find your mercy. You will find forgiveness. You will find your healing. You will find your renewal. Because he has set a place to get his, 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 his grin of integrity back in place for you. We have an arch enemy before we were even formed in our mother's womb that refused to get his creative integrity back intact. Just this week I was sharing with someone. I said, listen to me. Lucifer, Satan, was created by God, not the dark side. But his whole being was to be the archangel when it comes to worship. Understand worship is in the presence of God. Worship is not outside the presence of God. Worship is in the presence of God. Worship is where the throne of God is. Worship is not outside the pyramid of the throne. But worship is right in the throne room of God. And he was specifically created by almighty God. That he will carry all the instruments inside of him. Understand what I am saying to us this morning. He had pipes inside of him. They call that the wind instruments. So when you see humankind playing wind instruments, it came out from somewhere. Reckon he had the cymbals. He had the thumbs. He had the keys. All of that built inside of him for part of worship. Because wherever you find the singing, you find the musicians. And he had it all in him, but he fell. He fell on his own notion. He fell because he thought he was so great being the one. That's why you got to watch yourself. When greatness has been loaned to you, watch yourself. Because there is an enemy that can persuade you to see yourself in a way you ought not. Whereby, and, and, and listen to me from the lowest level of understanding. Y'all stay with me please. Everybody is doing what they need to do. Your business is up here. Alright? Don't be going too, too and through. Otherwise I tell you stay home and watch your screen. Alright? Very, very important. Don't be distracted now. We don't have much time. So, so, so watch this. Now, he refused because he is number one. And his imagination taught him and spoke to him one day and said, you know without me, those cherubims and seraphims and them ain't going to have a backup. I'm the one that orchestrate how they're going to move. And he said, without me, that throne in itself would not get what is due. So he says, now, if this is so, then I could build my throne above. Have you ever asked 
the word of God, how was he able to influence a third of the angelic hosts to follow him? He used his position unrighteously. He used his position outside of the integrity grid that he was created to operate from. Everybody wants somebody to follow. Everybody wants somebody to follow. Not because you have the mask on, you think I ain't seeing the expression. I'm seeing it. I have seen some of our people put up some posts of who they're going to follow. And I say, okay. And I want to ask them the question, what about this person you want to follow? And why? They say, this, this person could be my mentor. Okay, in what? In what they're going to mentor you in? Let me hear. Because somebody and all or everybody needs somebody to follow. God knows what he has created and he said, I want you to follow my son. Oh, no amen for that. Everybody needs to be loved. So somebody needs a lover. Yeah. Let me get to Joseph. Go with me to chapter 40. I'm leaving you all alone this morning. <clears throat> and I want us to look now. <sighs> At verse 7. So he asked Pharaoh's official who were in custody. That is Genesis chapter 40 verse 7 for those of you who are online and those of you here. So he asked Pharaoh's official who were in custody with him in his master's house. Why are your face so sad today? Of course I share that this was an expression of the inner heart of Joseph towards those who were in prison with him. And it showed that Joseph's heart did not have no guile or bitterness and unforgiveness and so forth inside of him. If, it, if, it, if, if those things were inside of Joseph, it would have blinded him from seeing the expression of trouble in somebody else's life. Have you ever met somebody that you thought you could have shared your troubles with and when you finish, they say, I can't help you, you know, I have my troubles of my own. <laughs> it's a human reaction. When one is burdened with their own burdens, they see about their own burdens and they don't have time to see about yours. But Joseph also had his own down in the prison and we might look at it today or maybe Wednesday's coming at the end of the day. But because of the working of the bread of integrity inside of Joseph and because he was an upright servant in his health, he did not let what is going on in his life hinder him now from working out what has been entrusted to his life. Now this is something that we have to learn. When something has been entrusted to you, you cannot let nothing come in the way to stop your service to that which has been entrusted to you. That's why in Christianity, there are many believers that right now presently they can't because something cut across. How long are we going to be believers that continue to, to walk with God and every Monday morning is as though you have not eaten the word of God? We are easily being bewitched by whatsoever it is. We are not maturing to the years you have told me I've been walking with God. I look for the evidence of maturity based on the number you have given me. And if I'm not seeing it, then I have to choose between the years and the walk. Which one would you choose? It would have to be the walk, not the years. Because the walk will determine what you have done with your years. Okay, yo. You never met people I tell you? I'm 60 who, I'm 50 who, I'm 40 who, I'm 30 who, and then you ask, well, 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 well what have you achieved? What, what have you achieved? 
He said, uh, really and truly, no, no, no. And he asked them, why? If they're honest, they will say, I wasted my years. Come on, somebody. That's why whenever you want to call numbers, look at manifestations of growth. Do not lie to yourself when you have to judge between the fruit and the years the seed have been planted in that ground. Has it brought forth in the abundance that it should have or have it not? If it has not, then it means to say, I need help. Now, am I willing to give myself to be helped because you're still have life? Once the earth remains, seed time and harvest will always remain, the principle remains. So you don't have to remain this kind of way because if the tree is not bearing good, according to what I've learned in agri-science, you got to dig a perimeter around those roots, even though it's there, and you put nutrients in the ground, growing salt and all what is needed. And when the season comes around again, that same tree in a season that did not bring, can now bring forth. Come on, somebody. But it's what you desire determines how you will give yourself to get it. Oh, come somebody, come somebody. You all could do so, you know. You all could do so too. It's all right. You don't have to be in Minister Hagee's church to clap. Right now, I ain't going to hear you say amen, but you could do so. And I mean, amen, I'm with you. What do you want? What Joseph wanted was the will of God to continue to be unfolded in his life because he really don't know. Now remember, what is happening right here is, as I shared a few Wednesdays and Sunday before, is that destiny is touching and I shared about people coming and they're going to be part of your life, whether for a lifetime or for a season time. But their life and your life had to touch for a purpose. But there are many things that I need to share when it comes to the touching of for whether a lifetime or just for a season. Because there are many things we need to understand. But the key to all of this is about a giving and a receiving. Like how iron sharpens iron. And there are times a person in your life where it what came to sharpen you. And there are times they came that you will sharpen them. That's why your grade of integrity got to be right because if you're puffed up and haughty and all that, the person that came that was supposed to sharpen you came right there with you in that season and you never give them the opportunity for why they came. The season is past and you are still dull in your hearing. You are still blind in your vision and the person's season is up. They're gone. And you miss your moment because your grid has so much corrosion and you are comfortable with it. Tell your God, make a way out, but do we really want that way? Because this is a way out that God has produced for Joseph. Does he want this way? We would say yes. He said not a word just like Jesus. He said not a word because the young man had to learn to trust in God. From his father's house, where his brothers were enemies to him, he learned to trust in God to preserve him. And when they threw him into the pit, I got to trust God to get me out of here. When he was sold, I got to trust God to be with me. Come on, somebody. All these are life adversities that are not positive. They are negative. Where is God? And God said, I'm right there. I'm working it out for my goodwill and my good pleasure because the picture is bigger than what you feel right now. And if you trust me beyond what you feel, your feeling will not cause you to abort. And for too long we have lived a life where we have been hemorrhaging and aborting. But in this season, you got to say, God, let me carry it the full cycle. Let me birch this thing right, God. At least one time for my lifelong years. Let me get this season right, God. Let me get it right. Let me get it right. Let me get it right. Let me get this season right. So here is Joseph, the master of the jail, end up being his master in the house. And the master of the house, that is the master of the jail. Now, Sam, so put them. I put you in charge of them, the chief ones now. 
They're down inside there and there is purpose now. Joseph is about to see the purposes of God. So one day these two guys had a dream the same night. And I have to do a whole segment on dreams because it's very important that we understand dreams because that is in the spiritual realm. And when it comes to the spiritual realm, we don't fully understand it. And when you think it's only God in the spiritual realm, his enemy is also in the spiritual realm too. And the enemy knows how to work from that dimension too. So don't you dare think that all dreams are of God. There are dreams that are not of God. There are dreams that has to do with you and have not one single thing to do with heaven, have nothing to do with God. Now how would we know the difference? Well, I'll give you all the scripture when that time comes. Stance must not rule me now because I'm a kingdom walker and a kingdom flavorer. And because I'm moving by kingdom, then there is work outside here for me to do. So I will meet people who have maybe the same type of problem that I have rest on God, but I'm a mouthpiece of God to help them. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Or are you going to say, then I'm not qualified to tell you because I have not master mind. Oh. You see, that is a perspective of the world. Because the world says, when you learn to fix, then you can come and talk. And I've heard believers talk in that kind of dimensions. Okay. The first time the Lord showed me that, I wasn't long ago, he shared that with me. See when Jesus was on that cross? You remember a statement the people were saying? Why doesn't he? Not see who's there. In essence, they were breaking down the work that was already established before them. They saw it in a twisted, distorted way, and they missed the moment. That's why the centurion, somehow he came out of the circle, and all of a sudden he said, he is the son of God. He stood long when everybody left watching up. You see, sometimes you just have to let everybody move. That have caught you held in their ring of opinions. But when you're by yourself and you look again all by yourself and the Spirit of God is right here to guide your eyes and bring back to your remembrance, then you have to make your personal judgment call. He is. He need not to come down and save himself to prove it to me. Because I now understand it was the will of his father that he not save himself. Oh my God. You see, sometimes when you start to live kingdom, others would say, if I were you, please correct them and say, you are not. And your destiny call in mind. So our responses will not be the same. But you must know your responses because kingdom has given the approval that I say not a word. I shift not my steps, but I keep stepping those ordered steps because I know the season of deliverance is going to come. Am I helping anybody this morning? Watch this with me. One night, two dreams. One morning, same condition in both people's lives. Here is Joseph coming in because he have to serve them. Somehow I, I, I fully don't understand it. But I believe the grade of integrity does not show partiality. And not because we are prisoners, then we must be downfoundedly treated in a way as though we're not human. Okay. So Joseph has superior 
authority over them to serve them. What type of service is that? We know it would be good service. Because we know who Joseph is. Is that not so? Yes, we do. But that day when he came out, he saw that something is wrong with these guys. They are not looking happy because they had a dream. Both having dreams that trouble them. Both dreams not the same. But both dreams carries the justice that was warranted for why they were in prison. Hmm. And the one to execute the righteous justice that is in the heavens towards all of us would have to be one that is in righteous alignment with the heavens. That's Joseph. Now many can raise their opinion and say, well then if he is righteously from the heavens, then why is he in the same place like us? You see, if we should begin to think like that, it will throw you off of the divine will of God for your life, even when they put you in prison. I think Jesus told us that when they put you in prison, I will be with you. See, some of us want to serve Jesus based on our own convenience, eh? But when you start to hit kingdom and God said, now for the next six years, ministry going to be in prison walls. <laughs> I thought Mary Raymond would have had to open the door for you all to leave. But you all remain. Bless the Lord. Because when true ministry start a call for you, and God said, prison time now, they will accuse you and they will throw you and they will find you guilty. But I know you're not. I allow it to happen because there are a few men and women behind there that needs you. Am I ready for that type of ministry? Oh, you yeah. See, I'm telling you. Anyhow. So hear what Joseph said. Joseph said to them, simply this. <clears throat> when he asked them, they said, we both had dreams and all that. Joseph said to them, <clears throat> we both had dreams, that's verse 8. They answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Wednesday, last week, I stopped at this particular point. No one to interpret. I spoke about the hidden ministry inside of us. That there's a season and time when it's going to be unearthed out from us. The gift of administration was very, very, very pronounced on Joseph's life. That they knew and that was working for him. But being an interpreter of dreams in part of us house, we don't know about it. Even in his father's house, we don't know about it. All we know, they used to heckle him and say, you're a dreamer. But the interpretation of dream, because listen, we don't need to do anything to dream. Yeah. Hello? Hello? You and I don't need to do none to dream or fall asleep. <laughs> you know how to work and go and get in a dream? Just fall asleep. Watch a scary movie, you get a scary dream. Is that not true? Yes, it's going to trouble you. That's why watch what you take in before you shut your eyes. Because it will alter the heavens. Some of you wouldn't want to hold what I just said, but you better hold it. If you truly know God speaks to me through dreams, then keep your conscious mind pure. When I do the series on dreams, you will understand why. So they had their dreams. But we did not know Joseph had that gift of interpretation. How did that come about? I shared it with you. From in his own personal life, in his father's house, he dreamt his dreams, he shared his dreams, and he got in trouble for sharing his dream. You don't think the boy would be discouraged? Yes, he would have been. But he was wise enough to know even in spite of discouragement, I will pursue my God because I know dreams come from God too. So I will go in pursuit of my God to find out what does this mean, God? You don't dream dreams and sit down on it. Neither do you dream dreams and don't go before God with it. And it's not right that you dream dream and you're just looking for an interpreter and you don't want to develop your relationship with God when you're dreaming like that. I call that lazy believers. You're lazy. 
You're speaking in tongues, and up to now you haven't even said, ask God, give me the interpretation. Say, so somebody, God, don't give that. No. Ask him, he will give it. You say, he said, you have not, because you have not. You're lazy. If you ask him, he will give it. Pursue it. Have the right reason that you can get it. I believe, this is my opinion, it's not gospel, it's my opinion, that Joseph received this gift because he pursued God because of his personal conflict coming out from the dream that was given him. And they were from God. And the boy needed to understand why are they persecuting me because of this dream? Why? And sometimes when destiny rests on you early and you share it too much times, you could get persecuted. Eh? Because such dreams like those, as they said, are you trying to tell me that we're going to have to bow down to you? Are you trying to tell me that you will reign over us? He couldn't answer those questions. But in reality, the truth is, yes. But at that stage, he cannot speak in the affirmative that is yes. But somehow, the dream somehow is showing us that path. But he don't have the confidence yet. He, don't, he didn't develop the fortitude yet, the discipline yet. All these virtues of integrity have to be forged in the boy. God is still forging him because the final conflict has not yet come. Come on, you You could be walking with God for 50 years and he says it will take a hundred for you to be complete. Joseph knew this and Joseph gave himself to it. That's why he served. And as he said, he knew God was unfolding because his confidence was happening and he and God was having things happening in the background. Yes, the Bible did not take time to share it, but in our own human experience, it is trying to tell us that there are silent things and silent things belongs to you and God. Yeah. That is when it's you and God, it don't go public. What is for public will come out. But what is for you and God remains silent chambers. So when you're reading the Bible now, you say, but God, why you didn't tell us this part of the story? It's not for you to know. And I'll go as far as to say, you're too fast. There are things are to remain in the bedroom. And when the bedroom door is shut and you come out, nobody must know what happened in that room there. But we have a world now that exposes bedroom. And we don't care. Remember old school dressing, I always preach on this. When a half slip and a whole slip is to make sure and see that there, that there would be no indecent exposure when light hit the garments. Now half slip and whole slip is aware. Well, some of you are me who because you don't know where's a half a slip anyhow. <laughs> you don't know you say where's a whole slip? What is that? That's because you, you, you take up the form of the what they call the new era that really is indecent. And they don't care. The grid of integrity has been corroded and now it has become a norm. And we call it new. That is not the new of God, y'all. That is indecency. And you have to know how to dress with decency. Apostle Paul spoke about that to both the man and the woman. You have to know how to do it, but somehow we just want to be according to the atmospheres that we are in. It is not right before God, and we have to look at it, right? Two more minutes before my hour. Wednesday is coming. Don't be anxious. Tell me your dream! And the first dream was told by the cup bearer. And the cup bearer had three branches. He had the fruits and all the different stuff. And he saw himself squeezing the grapes in, in Pharaoh's cup and giving the Pharaoh's cup to him. And Joseph said, this is the interpretation of the dream. He says, in three days time, Pharaoh is going to call for you. You will be reinstated back to your former position. And you would serve your Pharaoh that day, three days time. 
I want you to know the mark of one who stands that God is going to show and authenticate and prove will put time and date. It would not be left to the open air for any time and date. True authentication, a time is given. Tomorrow, around this time, next year, around this time, read the scripture and you'll realize you're going to be with child. This is going to happen. That is going to happen because a time is given. That doesn't make you false, but when you are in training, he is training you to come into the accuracy now that you could speak time and date. Are we getting this here? Yes. So that was a favorable answer of the dream for the Kabera. Hip, hip, hooray. When the baker heard it, he said, Woo! I feel good for you, bro. <laughs> Joseph, I'm going to tell you mine. And the baker told Joseph his dream. And his dream was about he had baskets on his head, bearing the bread. And birds started to eat the bread in the baskets. And Pharaoh had his head. Hmm. Joseph said, let me tell you your dreams. Tree basket on his head. Bread inside. Birds eating at the basket on his head. And Pharaoh had his head. He said, in three days time, Pharaoh going to hang you. He going to have your head. Now listen to me. Sometimes we are swayed by another person's life. And it causes us to figure I could not run and my life ending go be like your life ending. And it's not so with God. Sometimes we have gone to certain meetings to whosoever come because somebody said, come, come now, man, come now. This person tell me about X, Y, and Z. And you figure what you heard from your friend will be told to you. It's not always like that. Same dream, both troubled, but the interpretation totally different. One is going to be restored and the next one is going to die. The grade of integrity does not show partiality in the delivery. In as much as he shared the positive, he shared the negative the same way. It's not that he is happy that the man's head is going to be taken, but he did not rob the man the integrity of his service. Some of us love messages of only the cup bearer. The cup bearer messages, all positive. But when it comes to the baker's message, you scoff. You don't want the baker's message, but you need to have the baker's message too. Because if that's the truth and the reality, then you gotta receive it. Because it's God's justice that is being released. Stand with me, everyone. And you know what you gotta do? You gotta clap better than that. This is on to God this morning. And so this morning, I believe all of us are believers in the house. But where you are, if you are not a believer and you are standing there, you receive the word of the Lord and the Lord has been speaking to your heart from since all what has happened and you know I need to give that life to the Lord. Listen to me now this morning. Where you are, if you have never given your life to the Lord and you need to give your life to the Lord, just raise your hands right now. I want to give my life to the Lord. Just raise that hand. We will identify who you are and speak with you after the service. If this is not so, then for every believer inside here, you know where you are in your walk with God. And I pray that the Spirit of the living God would have already stirred your life for you to look into your life and say, God, I want you to mature me more than where I am and where I have been. I want my years to be counted for the growth fruiting that should be established in my life. Be sick and tired of being where you are. Because the mark is 30, 60, even 100 fold. If you're stuck at 30, ask why you don't want to move to 60. And if you're stuck at 60, ask why you don't want to make a move to get your 100. 
when it has been made available to be gotten. As believers, aim for it. Go for it. Don't remain there. I challenge every one of us today. Father, bless your people in the name of Jesus right now. Let us regurgitate this word as we leave. And let this word be the meal that is going to keep us and we will pursue you more. Wednesday is coming and more will be given. We thank you and we bless you for what has been said, what has been sown, what has been done. I thank you for the healing. I thank you for the deliverance. I thank you for the breakthrough. You have done this already. And I pray every one of us will receive what the Lord has done. And we give you thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. Now, before we listen back, I want to say this to all of us. Now we, they're going to put up on the board there, I believe. We have birthdays. And I just want to recognize all those who are going to be having birthdays this coming week. We have Pearl Mitchell coming up on Thursday. The city, let bless God for Pearl. Let's bless God for Pearl. She is still on the earth. She is still alive. She is, she is getting older, but she is getting younger at the same time. On the 16th is Pearl's birthday. On the 17th, which is Wednesday, we have Dexter Taylor and Giovanni Forbes. Let's bless God for both of them. That's Wednesday. And come Friday the 19th, we have Donnelly Pascal that is going to have her birthday. Let's bless, let's bless God for that. Amen. And also, um, belated birthday greetings to, I believe, is, is, is George Charles. Right? George Charles. All right. So, blessings to you. <clears throat> this afternoon, the fourth. And Thursday, the 18th of June, 6 p.m., we have the Root Project. Let's project. Let's thank God for Evangelist Angela Paul. In this season and time, and listen to me, Angela, I want you to hold it. Eh? You realize, like Isaac, the Root Project is shooting up more than before. Angela, a hundredfold. In this year, this season, the root project is going to just expand. Yes, sir. I am telling you, you, you are marking it. You are seeing what is happening right now. It's going far and wide because, Angela, this is the season and time. You were not partial in how you served your God, but you were willing to serve him. And he is willing now to expand you. Women of God, sons of God. Take in the root project. It is awesome. Much to learn. It is from one of our own. Don't neglect it. Don't do like Joseph's brothers. <laughs> Don't do that. Deliverance is going to come from one of our own. You'll be surprised. This afternoon at 6, the root project continues. And what are they dealing with? Overcoming the pain of incest, rape, and rejection. This time, they're going to California because we have Apostle Irene Houston. She was here already. She is going to be the speaker on that. So, 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 make sure and, and zoom in because it's going to be a Zoom meeting, so you're going to be part of it. Get your credentials, your, your ID, so you can tap into and you can be part of this meeting because I know Sister Irene is going to share some good stuff. Apostle Irene is going to share some good stuff and I want us to be part of this. All right? It's happening at 6. Amen? So I want us to continue be, to be praying one or another. The next time we're going to meet is tomorrow afternoon at 6. We're going to be in prayer, not in here, but online. So remember, tune in again, tune in again. We're going to be online. The next time we're going to be inside of here is going to be on Wednesday at 6. We begin at 6 and we finish at 7 from and you're going to leave and go home. And then youths, remember, on Friday we're still dealing with current team. Alright? So be part of that. That is going to be online. We're not going to be here. It's going to be online. If you want any information, go up on the website. Everything is there. ValleyKingdomMinistry.org. Go up on the website and you'll get all the information you need to know when things are happening. Encourage and invite others to come. We hold 90 inside. In fact, we hold do I have it right? It's 70, 70 inside here and 25 across there. So that give us 95 in all. So we had other sittings that others could have been here. We had upstairs too as well. So we thank God for all of you who are here. Now, now when we're leaving, we are going to be given our offering. And then you leave through the front door. All right, you all? 
How are we going to do it? The ushers going to come to you because we're doing row by row soap. All right? Not going back, soap. So as the usher come, you come and you give. You wait for the person in front of you to give, then you come. So that there would be a distancing between you. We just letting us know, right? And then you go out by the, um, the front door, this side there, and we have to leave. We cannot be chatting and all the different kind of stuff. We just got to go. God richly bless you, keep you. Bless the offering, Father, that has been given. Multiply for the needs of the people. Bless your people as they go in this week. We know you have made your face to shine upon every one of us, and we shall experience your peace, and the joy of the Lord will continually be our strength. Hope in God, and keep going in your God. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. So let us now come to give at the instruction of the usher. Do not remove yourself from your sitting, but remain there and let the ushers direct you, please. Saints of God, let us be obedient. Order in the house, then we'll have order outside the house. All right? Let God do this for us, please.